pandemic has been a very much uh, asymmetric shock. And in fact, uh, going forward, economic cycles of all those major regions are expected to be further disynchronized because of the different pace of vaccine for sure, but also the extent to which fiscal and monetary policies uh, will move back towards more gradual or more normalized uh, pace. China is ahead of the cycle, followed by the US, then Europe, and then Japan and emerging markets. In the US, um, growth is not expected to slow over the second half of this year, but investors are increasingly going to look at a peak in everything, peak in fiscal policy, peak in growth expectations, peak in earnings, and potentially as well peak in monetary policy, even more so with the Federal Reserve starting to awaken towards the risk to see higher inflation. In China, the recovery is losing steam. The economy is slowing down because of lower gross exports, pressure on corporate margins as well. Consensus does not appear to have integrated this for the moment, and the Chinese economy could slow could grow slower than what it is expected if nothing is done on the loosening on the fiscal or the monetary side. In Europe, it's more classical pattern. We should expect monetary and fiscal to remain very supportive, but we have to pay attention to the fact that the euro economy is still very exposed and very vulnerable to potential Chinese slowdown. Yes, I mean, it's true that the past 18 months we have seen uh, bond yields taking a form of a roller coaster ride. Huh? And I can understand that there are some few questions from investors uh, in these markets because of the very low rates on environment, very difficult questions to address over inflation and uh, potentially more accidents uh, to come. All these are risks, but there are also, uh, I would say, potential opportunities. if one can implement an active approach and when you have the necessary leeway, leeway to, to adapt and to benefit uh, from it. Where do we see uh, opportunities? Well, the current context uh, is seeing that of a disynchronized growth and disynchronized growth means disynchronized uh, monetary policy response as well. So as such, there is value uh, to be implemented in implementing an active management of or exposure to US interest rates markets where inflationary pressure are at the highest and where the Fed is gradually indicating that it's on its way to tapering. In the Euro area, it's rather the opposite, very few inflationary uh, pressures, so potentially much more value to be invested there in some specific credit uh, markets or so-called spread products like in so-called peripheral debt as well. The environment should be uh, continuing to favor carry strategies for active for active uh, managers. In such a context, we believe it's important to implement or to uh, implement uh, or to select a fund which is active, which is flexible, diversified, and implement a total return approach. Uh, we have such a strategy at Carmignac, which is called Carmignac Flexible Bond. It's a strategy which was created more than eight years ago, and we seek a double mandate. One is to outperform fixed income markets, whatever the environment, and the other one is to deliver positive returns over the recommended horizon of three years in whatever the, the environment in fixed income markets. Historically, we have delivered very strong results, both in higher bond yield environments and lower bond yield environments, thanks to three performance drivers. One is fixed income allocation. To this end, we defined an economic scenario and we build a fixed income allocation adapted to this scenario. And fixed income markets today are very broad and allowed to do so. So if we have lesser visibility, for instance, like today, we can have significant portion of cash. When markets are richly valued, we can hedge part of the market in credit, in so-called emerging markets as well. The second one is an active management of both interest rates risk and credit risk. And this is also very important to be able to adapt our long-term views to potential short-term market movements. And finally, the third performance driver is the active bond picking. We have two lead managers who are running this Carmignac flexible bond strategy. 
they built, they designed it back in 2013, but they benefit from the entire contribution of the fixed income uh, team, which is of 15 people dedicated to credit market, emerging markets, financial, developed uh, sovereigns and, and the like. And this is also a very strong source of added value, even more in an environment where market segments or indices are richly valued.